All right, so I'm going to show you now um, some more animation stuff. The, what I have up here now basically moves one ball straight across the screen and another ball straight down when the app begins. So it's not too complex. Um, I'm going to do a little more complexity. What I want to do is, to start, I want this ball that's going across, when it he hits this edge, I want it to kind of loop back and start going again. Okay, so the way to do that is there's an edge reached event um, with the balls and with the image sprites as well. But I'm going to grab ball one, edge reach. So ball one is this guy. And when I reach the edge, I kind of want to just set his X property back to, to zero, right? I want to make his, his location be back to the total left side of the screen. So I'm just going to set ball.x back to zero. And I'll, you know, immediately my live testing kind of shows that, that it, that it works, right? Um, and of course the Y is, is still stuck where it is. If I restart the app, it would start and go one, one time. So let's do something with the up and down ball. Instead of trying to loop back, what I'll do is I want to make it go straight down and then turn around straight up and then straight down and continuously go back and forth. That's a little different, it's a little harder. Um, and what I'm going to do is first introduce a variable. So a variable is a way to remember something. And I'm going to call this variable distance. And this is going to be the distance moved. And I'm just going to put in a 10 here. So distance is, you know, it's going to change. It's a variable. We're going to start it out as 10. And in fact, I'm going to get rid of the 10 that I'm using to move Y. And instead, what I'm going to do is move distance on each clock timer. Okay, so this should work exactly the same, right? So the variable distance, this memory cell, holds a 10 in it. And now instead of moving y by the fixed number 10, I'm going to move it by the variable, but that variable has a 10 in it, so it should just move like, like it did originally. So I'm going to reset my emulator just to show you that this app should work exactly the same. And you'll see that the ball drop from the top down to the bottom at 10 pixels every, every time frame. Now what we really want to do is when the ball, that ball 2 reaches the edge, reaches the bottom, we want to change how much it moves on each time frame. In fact, we want to make it go negative 10 instead of 10. So there it goes. So it's back to, back to just moving straight down. But when I reach this edge, I now want to go back up, right? And so essentially what I want to do is I want to set the distance to negative 10 instead of 10. Um, and I'm going to do that on the ball 2.edge reached. So I'll grab an edge reached event for ball 2. And I'm not going to move ball 2 at all. What I'm going to do is change my variable. And the way I change a variable is I go to my definitions. And because I've defined this variable, I now got a couple blocks here. One of them lets me change the variable. I'm going to set distance to and what I'm going to set it to, just to start, I'll set it to negative 10. Okay. So when I reach an edge, it's going to cause the ball to start going back the other way. And you, and you just saw it actually happen. Um, let me show you again. So I'm going to reset the emulator. So what should happen when this restarts is the ball should start at the top, go down, hit the edge, and then go back to the top. It's not continuous yet because my code's not complex enough. But at least I'm kind of turning it around. And, you know, I'm turning it around because, you know, as it's going down, it's moving by 10. You know, the Y is going down by 10. When I hit the edge, I make it, the Y coordinate change by negative 10, so go back up. So, boom, change direction, go back up. Now, when it hits this edge, distance is getting set to negative 10, so it's still trying to go up, and, and it can't. So, really, what I want to do is, if it was 10, change it to negative 10. But if it's negative 10 change it back to 10. So one way to do that is with an if-else statement. So I'm going to put this conditional block in here. My test is going to be comparing distance, and I'll just compare it to 10, and it equals, and I'm going to say, you know what, if my distance is 10, then I'm going to set it to negative 10. Otherwise, and I'll just copy this guy, I'm going to set it back to 10. So it's a little funky, but, you know, if it's 10, when I reach an edge, change it to negative 10. 
If it's not 10, so I know it's negative 10, change it back to 10. And if you notice, the app's going back and forth now because of my complexity here. So essentially, every time I reach an edge, flip-flop this variable distance to 10 or negative 10, and all's good.